colours that will colour their season. He can call on Mike Brown once again. The fullback's imperious campaign was interrupted by a dead leg against Exeter last weekend. In the workhouse, George Robson's recovered from concussion and is back to stir the pot from the second row. He and Matthews go sharp elbow to sharp elbow against Hooper and Atwood. A landmark day for Nick Easter. A decade at the Quins. This is 232nd game, which equals the record in the professional era. And it's Maori for Asabalu's final appearance at the Stoop before he moves on to France. Well, just when Bath needed them most, the likes of Lowe, Garvey and Weber will all be watching on with us today. Weber's absence and Ross Batty's as well means Eusebio Guinazu, the Argentinian, who is the club's third choice hooker, makes what will be his first premiership start of the season. That's the only alteration to the pack. Behind them, the backs are unchanged. So Oli Devoto continues at inside centre ahead of Kyle Eastman and alongside the recently returned Jonathan Joseph. At fly half, George Ford, a few weeks away from from stepping on a plane with England to New Zealand has another intriguing individual contest ahead with a former Ben. It does and there's some titanic battles. Look at all the back five, so evenly matched. But for me, where's going to be the real head-to-head -head that's going to make the difference? Up front at the coalface, that battle between James and Sinclair. Because Sinclair's a power athlete, he likes to run around the field, carry hard. But scrummage-wise, he scrummages hard, he's strong. James is the wily old operator, the dark arts. And with a wet surface, it's drying out now, the wet surface should help the guy with the dark arts over the power scrummager. I think whoever gets on the upper hand there will give their half-backs the front foot. Carey Young is a great battle. Evans and Ford will take care of the points. But for me, the key battle that could decide this game is at 15. Brown versus Abendanon. Different types of players, but both get very involved in their team's performance. Both have an X factor and both can turn a game on his head. Well, it's not quite as simple as winner takes all, as we've been explaining. If Harlequins win with four tries, then they are into the playoffs, whatever this lot do. If Quinns win without four tries, then Bath will need two losing bonus points to secure their place in the playoffs. And they've been in the playoff positions for all but one week of the season, just one week, not in the top four. So on a weekend when it matters most, this really is not the time to slip out of the frame. Slip out now, and there is no safety net. Stuart Hooper, George Ford, Mickey Young, all of them with eyes that tell their own stories. They need to turn the tide of recent history. They've not won here in the Premiership for 10 years. No better time to do it. Yeah, away from home, you've got to really turn up. Put down a marker early on. And their defence will be absolutely key against one of the most potent attacking forces in the Premiership. The Bath have been pretty handy in that department at keeping teams at bay. How do you see this going generally, Oz? I think if you allow Bath to come forward onto you, you allow George Ford to move onto the ball, he can control the game. So it's down to the line speed of these guys. Nick Easter, the back row, they have to put pressure on Ford. If they push him back, they're at home, they get the upper hand, they win. If Ford's allowed to run, I think Bath can walk it. Looks like Nick Easter's leading them out on his record equaling appearance. Not far behind him will be the England skipper. I think he'd be on my shortlist for player of the season. He's not in the official half dozen, but he's been immense from start to finish. Four wins in a row, latest at Sandy Park last Sunday, meant they kept their foot in the playoff door when it really seemed to be slamming on them a month or so ago. The champions two seasons ago with a chance to rekindle warm Twickenham memories. Wayne Barnes, Paul Dix and Nigel Carrick in charge, David Grassoff, the TMO. And for the first time this season, right at the end of the season, all six Aviva Premiership matches kicking off at the same time. A reminder, we've got Saints Wasps on BT Sport 2. We'll keep a tab on all the other scores as well, of course. But you won't miss a thing here on BT Sport 1. We're about to find out which of these two's league season ends here. Who will extend theirs into the playoffs?
I was just noticing as the players ran out, so many flags around the ground. The Harlequins commercial department done such a good job, but they're all painted, uh, pointing in different directions, blowing hard in the wind, but it's swirling. Going to be very difficult to take these high kicks. Easter with the first of them. The man who's been picked ahead of Kyle Eastman today, Oli Devoto, fields safely. However, it's been immediately stolen back by Harlequins who get the first chance to attack through Jordan Turner Hall. Here goes Ward, driven forward by Easter. Landmark game at the end of a notable season for the Quinns number eight. It's a monumental steal from Mercer. First one in the back for him. He's going to be vital to Bath's chances today. A couple of early steals, one for either side, right from the kickoff. He did so well to get over the ball really quick. This is from the kickoff. Bath won't be happy that they lose control at the base and it gave it Harlequins the opportunity to go for it. But look how quickly Mercer comes in, releases his hands and gets over that ball. Textbook, Jacqueline. Ward. A man of Bath. Growing up as a lad and for a while as a player as well, but now very much an adopted South West Londoner. Break from Ferns who motors over halfway. All a little bit loose, a little bit nervy, and you can understand that. Yeah, good little break off turnover ball from the line. A tough call for Ward. Mentioned the win before and how it'll affect yeah. taking the high balls. But for your first call to be throwing long, you can see it drifts away. Bath turn it over, and they get. The big carrier Burns in midfield just can't get the ball to hand on the outside. There's a sign of the renewed confidence that Dave Ward has this season in all aspects of his game. The throwing used to be a little bit of an Achilles heel, but he's really worked hard on that this season. Perhaps we'll have a little closer look at it as the game wears on. This is an area that Bath will want to dominate, the driving play. You can see Harlequin's tactic immediately to show them that they can tie in defenders as well. Turn all linking up with Kerr. Here goes Evans. Mike Brown was offering himself, but Evans went through half a hole. Kerr. This is Tim Molinar, significant mid-season signing from Gloucester. Brown. Ball fell on by Mickey Young, who is shot into touch. He's the second man. He's the second man. Significant to see. Harlequins using Evans in the outside channel on first phase ball to get that run around and get the playmaker, but also one of their quickest players out, making the decisions. What has surprised me early on, Ben, is how much space is out there. Both sides defending quite poorly out in the 13 channels, allowing breaks. You'd expect a game like this to be incredibly tight. Significant day for Brown and Monia. Premiership game number 153 equaling Kerry Jones club record again Ward goes long this time to greater effect finding for Asabalu Evans or oh, Brown cut inside the charge from Banahan Kerr just pops it up and off they go again with Marla number five about a metre from the side of a rack and a metre in front of it George Robson was offside. Come through the gate, please. Coming in from the side. Five. Just interesting there to see Harlequin's tactics from the line out. The overthrow was deliberate to get Marfa Asabalu out running at George Ford. So they throw to the back to try and tie in those back row defenders at the line out. And then you've got your biggest, one of your biggest ball carriers running straight at one of the smallest defenders in the opposition. It's exactly what Northampton did for early on last week Nine on Friday times. night, over the top with support, but fair play to Ford, he doesn't back off. You can argue that he's left the elbow I think the throw might have just well. taken him a bit, a little bit further than he was expecting, but it gives him the ideal charge straight at him and takes him onto the second defender. Bath trying to look after Ford by putting him one further out. Again, it's Easter right at the back, but for Asabalu, couldn't gather. We've talked about George Ford and how exposed he is in that position 
all season, Austin, but he's not one of those Baltimore tens. We've been saying that all season. No, he's not. He, he, defensively, he's strong, but he's not the biggest guy, so therefore he's going to be a target. It's very difficult if you only weigh 13 stone, no matter how good your technique, because there's only one guy that's booked that trend, and that's Johnny Wilkinson. He's the only guy who was a small guy, but an immense defender that I can remember. First scrum. Good to see us get on with that, despite the fact that they have gone down on this near side. Here goes Devoto, who's got quite a step on him, but he was hit by Asabalu. And then Abendanen. What he hopes will not be his final Premiership game for the club, off to Claremont at the end of the season. Skipper Hooper. Young. Ford. Ball was touched off. A Quinn's body and it will be a bath throw. Well, some good play to create that opportunity for Ford Devoto initially. You can see Turner, Turner Hall just turns a little bit early towards the touchline and gives him a sniff on the inside. Great cover tackle by Vata Balu, but he gets back to his feet, leg drive, and then look at how Bendenon checks his run. So he's running full tilt, gets half through against two big men. First try on the final afternoons come at Welford Road. Ben Spencer for Saracens. Less than ill. A very much weakened Saracens starting 15 5. Leicester really need Wasps to do them a favour at Franklin's Gardens to snatch a home semi final from Northampton. Tigers trailing to Saracens 5 0 early on. Just get your timing. So the front rows of Marler and Ward and Sinclair against James and Gwinnazu and Wilson. The two England props on this side of the referee's view. Keeping an eye, they went down flat on their stomach. He said it was just a slip, but he's come to have a good look. And it's Wilson who's been snapped out of it. And that was brilliant from Joe Marler, because Wilson attacked him, Marler let him come. And Wilson was quite high, and then he just drove up and got underneath Wilson. England's two props in the Six Nations. Surely in New Zealand in June, clashing armour today. So strong, Marler, in that chest and shoulder region. He doesn't need to win the hit, which is one of the reasons that he's having such a good year this year with the change in the laws. The hits used to actually not play into his hands, but he comes back at people. Look at Wilson go for him, and you can see that right shoulder just going up slightly, and as soon as it does, Marler goes forward, drives through the stake to the heart, and pops his man up. The throw wasn't straight. Yeah, your ball. Here we go. Okay, let's fight to stay square. Both teams fight to stay down. Crouch. Bynes. Mark Easters scored an early try at the Medeski. Irish nil, sale seven. Young Ford. Oh, that was really nicely done by Devoto. The eyes might have misled the defence as jo Joseph cottoned onto it. Seen some really lovely touches from Devoto this season. That was another. Ford taken heavily into contact. Best weather of the day so far. We had a right old storm about an hour before kickoff, but cleared up nicely. Ward's Intervention preventing the kick from Ford. Abendanen. This is Banahan. Monia's come up into the defence. Ford looks for the space that might have been left behind, but for Brown. Aware, Keen gathers the ball. Matthews with it on the floor. Care to Rob Short to Turner Hall. Oh, very tight, and in the end, penalty taken quickly by Rob Shaw. Continues to be played at a fairly furious, if inaccurate, pace at the moment. Yeah, you can see what Harlequins are trying to do, they're trying to speed the game up. 
at every opportunity. They know they don't want an arm wrestle with this Bath pack. So Chris Robshaw, they get a penalty. Most teams would have gone to the corner. He just wants to raise the pace of the game. Austin. I'm just surprised at how both sides are playing, actually, and so is George Ford. Normally, you'd expect here, you've got defensive numbers, you'd expect people to come on to you and blitz you and close the space. But Ford recognises that that's not happening. But watch, he's almost surprised that Quinns are putting more pressure on him. He's allowed to run up. He's almost got a free run at the minute. Very surprising defensive structures from both sides. It's going to be your scrum, OK? It's for sure. So you and Leon Lloyd on, on Wednesday night giving us a little bit of a tactical masterclass on the way George Ford unpicked Northampton's defence last Friday at the wreck. And as much as Harlequins would have appreciated your little insight, I suspect that they know all about the dangers that Ford will pose them given time and space. Now a score at the Gardens, Northampton, who need one point realistically for second place, are behind. Charlie Davies, early try for Wasps, they lead 5-0. Leicester behind early on against Saracens. Yes, yes. Paul James is furious because he'd broken his spine, but I think it's a good decision because Sinclair stayed in, he was in good shape. I think James just popped those hips out, he's got a tendency to do it, trying to tap the tight head. It's just being explained by the referee at the moment. But because it went round, they didn't use it, turnover. It's Kyle Eastman, bottom right, with the Chicago Bulls cap on. Might have been playing today, but they've gone for Devoto. I think as much as kicking qualities at inside centre, an extra fly half perhaps. out the back, route one, care to Monia, who will have been relieved to score his first try for a year at Sandy Park. Now, was that not forward deliberately by Atwood? It went backwards anyway, Wayne Barnes tells us. Ford. Oh, he seemed to be caught in two minds there, but it worked out brilliantly. He's got Watson up in support, and then perhaps the kick forward was not the best option. I think Watson accelerated thinking a pass was coming and overran it anyway he might have been offside when the kick went through here goes Sinclair it's a match that's got a feel much more akin to the sevens that's going on across the road at Twickenham this afternoon at the moment very little structure to it very little pattern and there's another mistake from the soon-to-be departed Mauri Fasavalu really good refereeing there. Let me just tell you why that's not a penalty there. He had opposition. Let's have a listen to his explain the decision to Robshaw. He's pulled the Bath player into him to buy a penalty. That's not acceptable. Scrum Bath. So the scrum's not for the breakdown, but the Harlequins players were saying that the Bath player on the floor was blocking the ball just coming stop. back. Wayne Barnes spotted that it was the Harlequins players that put the defender in that position. Is the break. Little show one way, show the other. And then. As the acceleration comes in, Brown just gets his hand to the ball, but I'm not sure that the player wasn't in front chasing. Lovely little show. It's Turner Hall again, who's turned very early. Just needs to protect his defenders on the inside. No, no. I just thought they got the drive up, and that's why it's turned over. It was just a drive. Didn't think that was a walk around. Yeah, that's, that's Sinclair on the floor, I think, who's just rolled the Bath player. Knock on, scrum. It does drive the players mad when they give away a penalty and there's nothing they can do to roll out of the way. Flowering clouds. Over the back of the main stand here at the stoop. That's the direction the weather's coming. Coming in from the west. Houston controls it on a plate for Youngs. Ford, Joseph, he's well hit by Molinar. We're one or two in these parts, wondering why Gloucester let him go mid-season. He's done a real job for them in a Harlequin shirt. Taken on by Ferns. Matt Garvey still missing with an ankle injury, as is Francois Lowe, which is why Guy Mercer's continuing to play today. Joseph took the ball standing still, and Ward made sure that he was going backwards pretty quickly afterwards. They're going to have a little blood break here to clash of heads. I think between the two hookers. It's the Argentinian. 
goodness me, if you're having, a, you're having, if you're having a jam scone, you might want to look away. That has to be the bloodiest head of the season. We've waited until the final day of the season, but that is proper blood and a proper clash of heads between the two hookers. I don't think he'll have to go off for that. It's only a little scratch. <laughs> you'd lost that much blood, you'd be on the floor fainting. <laughs> Do you remember the film in the 70s, Carrie? Okay. Probably a bit too young for that. Yeah. He looks a bit like Carrie. Julian, we've already done the replacement. Okay, Dave, Dave, Dave Ward, Ward meantime, yeah. not a scratch. Yeah. Titanium in his head. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Argentinian test hooker. That's third choice getting a go today in the absence of Weber and Batty. So Tom Dunn comes in, the academy prop, fourth choice hooker, thrown into the deep end, but a man with um, some future. Yeah, speaking to David Flatman before the game about it, he really rates this kid. He said he's a bit like Ward, all over the place, carrying the ball, converted prop because he wasn't big enough. He thinks he's got a massive future in the game. He was involved earlier than he would have expected this afternoon. Care. Evans, lots of runners, one of them was Molinar and he runs straight over to Voto. He is a lump, Tim Molinar. Brown. Turner Hall, Evans, picked it up neatly. Monia spins out of the tackle from Banahan, but Banahan persevered. Care, and this is Easter. Gets the ball away nicely to Care again. Links up with Robson. Evans for Asabalu. Oh, it's opening up a little bit here if they could find Molinar, but instead the Samoan hung on to it himself. And they reset. Chip through. Ball's been lost by Young. It might yet work for them. Initially, no one was really on Danny Care's wavelength, but in the end, it's okay from a Quinn's perspective. Yeah, it's a good attacking play from Harlequins, doing what they do well, offloading out of the contact. Mike, you're there, on release, put your hands down, and just calm down, just listen. If two players, one from each side, i.e. your captain touches the ball, you can go quickly. We'll let you play quickly, we'll let you play quickly if we can. OK, you played it as well as that player. Highly strong Mike Brown, but it just means so much to him. Good captaincy from Chris Robshaw. That play by Fasta Balu in the picture there. He was just what he held onto the ball, but he was waiting for one of the Bath defenders to commit and do something, make the decision for him. Bath held their integrity of the line. Young needed two bites of the cherry. Joe Carlisle was added to Wasps lead early on at the Gardens. They lead Northampton 8 0. News that will please them at Welford Road. Saracens remain five points up against Leicester. Mara just needs to get the other side, get his head the other side. He's done well. And they need to get into the back, but it's collapsed. They'll have to play. Kerr's got Turner Hall as an option, or Sinclair a little bit closer. And he takes some stopping. Ferns had to work hard for Asabalu and. It's Atwood charging out of the line to make the hit. And the battle for the ball on the floor. Evans. Stolen by Monia. For Asabalu. Remember Bath's gigantic defence against Northampton last Friday at the wreck. And they're being tested again here by Harlequins. Not just causing Harlequins to lose a little bit of their width. Ward. Easter takes it on. Care gives it some air to Brown in the corner. Nearing the end of the season of his life so far. The first try for Harlequins. They take the first step towards the playoffs. Well, just as I mentioned, Harlequins losing a bit of width. Mike Brown drifted out to this left touch line. And as Danny Kerr picked from the base, he ran hard. And then picked out a superb pass. Good initial break, getting in behind the Bath defence. That's what they're good at. And then he floats this path with just enough to tempt the defender to step out of the line. 
and that gives Brown enough on the outside to drift off the pass. And you, with the use of his fen, slide in for a great try. Such a high risk pass, but with that risk, you get a great reward. Brilliant pass from Danny Kerr. Keep going through. Watson, just as you said, Ben, almost left stranded by the float on the ball. Excellent play from Quinns. Once they start to go through the middle, that meant the Bath defence starts to suck in. Give Brown a bit of space out wide. just to go up, sniff the intercept, and because he does that, he can't get back to Brown, who's drifted well. And that's great work from Watson, really shoveling Harlequins back towards their own try line at a rate of knots, the ball's gone loose, and Wilson was after it initially. In the end, it was Tom Williams who rather rescued things. And Evans, gratefully, into the stands. Brown's just wounded slightly. It was an amazing hit off the kickoff. Tom Vondell for Wasps. What a start at Franklin's Gardens. The Saints, as a reminder, need just a point, realistically, to be sure of a home semi-final. At the moment, it's just the beginnings of a hill that they need to start climbing. Oh. It's Leicester 3, Saracens 8 at Welford Road. Taken by Atwood, who was under lots of pressure as he came down as well. Again, good refereeing. Some referees might have thought he got tipped. It was a good competition for the ball. Having some bump with the ball in that in hand today. Intended for Dunn, but it was lost. Picked up instead by Robshaw. Easter gives it some air to Marla. Back to Kerr. Snaps the ball away. And it's gathered by Ford. Abandoning. Clear release number two. You stayed on the ball, you came off really late and allowed the competition. Number two. It's against Ward. Won a lot of turnovers this year. Vassavalu did a really good job of owning the space, making it difficult for the Bath support players to get in, but never released the tackle. Nick Abendon's new team just kicking off, by the way, in the top 14 playoff against Cass. That's across on ESPN right now. So if you love rugby, you're in the right place. Here at the Stoop, BT Sport 1, we've got this one. BT Sport 2, Northampton against Wasps. ESPN. Something French. Clermont against Castro. Across all three channels at the moment. If you don't like rugby, you're in the wrong place. Again, a long throw goes awry for the youngster. It's three of their four line-outs lost. <laughs> Bruce Craig, the boss. shot from the back pack oh that has concertina harlequin scrum they did well to get it away evans moronar brown the try scorer swiftly away to monia he's tackled by watson who was back on his feet and into the defensive line quickly ward brown again hauling it over halfway 
Evans. Oh, they're using Molinar an awful lot. Ball's been lost. And an ominous sign for Harlequins at that last scrum. For the work, Wilson, he might have lost the first one to Marla. He stays low underneath. James doing his job on the far side as well on Sinclair. Harlequins need to stop that slide. George North has got Northampton on the board for the first time this afternoon at the Gardens. Still a six point gap. Not a seat to be had. A sellout at the stoop. And amongst those, one of England's big cheeses. Okay. Oh no, we just got. What have we got there, mate? No. No, no. Okay, got plenty in from that nine, okay? We got scrum. Do the stringers come on? Nicky Young is headed off to get himself patched up. Tom Dunn is still in the middle of the Bath Front Road. Gwynazu taking a little bit of cleaning. He left us five or six minutes ago now. So Bath with a couple of plug replacements on for the time being. The hooker and the scrum half who will try and combine here. I think String will certainly give them a little bit more pace in the back line. Bath will be surprised at Harlequin's defence, how much opportunity they're getting. With his pass, he gets so much width straight away. Houston, picking up from a scrum that was crumpling. Ferns. Hooper was there quickly to make sure that Stringer had ball to play with four. This is looking interesting to Voto. Ford once again sees the gap. Oh. Can't think there are many others in the Premiership at the moment who can do what George Ford does in that situation. Once again, it's Ford, and he has Bath on the board. Absolutely brilliant try. The way he just bides his time, got the ball in his hands, he keeps pumping the ball, moving it one way to the other. Defenders drop off him because of it. And then he has the acceleration to go right through the middle. That is a class try. And Houston under real pressure at the base, does so well, taking three players, looking for the offload. It's not on, he's patient. They get in behind Harlequins, and then the little kick almost helps Stringer, puts him on the front foot so he can release Ford into that channel, into the little gap. And as you said, just so quick. Jordan Turner Hall, though, backing off, didn't make a decision. It's the third time in that situation he's found himself too wide from his nearest defender, gets himself in no man's land and then becomes absolutely useless to the defensive line. And for the second time in a week, he does this to a defence. So it's just the way he just goes offline slightly. He's tempting, he's trying to make those defenders to make a decision. Is Jordan Turner Hall going to step in on me? No, I'll step back the other way and try and find that acceleration. Oh, the patched up Pume is back with us. He'll be on the pitch again shortly, abandoning him. Launching Bath again from deep and running into Sinclair. Didn't he do well to keep the leg driving? Turned it over though. Easter, Molinar, Monia. He's got four defenders gathering him around him. Monia did well. Fasabalu on the charge, snorting all sorts of evil things. Monya. Monya's just picking out Ford and using that fend into the chest, bouncing the far off away from him. Care, Evans, Ward. Big men invites to try and put some big dents in Bath's defence, and here goes Sinclair. Not many bigger than him. This is Turner Hall, who will use a little bit more footwork. Care, this is really nice from Harlequin. Oh. That was beautifully done. Easter, he needs to get the ball down. He thinks he has. The bish and the bash to begin with, and then the hands of a potter to release Nick Easter for a score. He thinks he's got. Second last pass, Wayne. Suddenly come alive, hasn't it, Danny Kay? When he makes the initial break, you think he's made the wrong decision, but he gets his hands through the tackle past Houston. He just waits, he waits, he waits, and he throws it. I think that's forward. That's a 
tough from that angle. I'd like to see the sideways. Tries to flick his hands round, doesn't he? Another it? angle, Wayne. Just hold. I don't think this is going to help in shows if it's forward or not, but it's a wonderful piece of skill from Danny Kerr and a great line and catch from Nick Easter, who had to get past Stringer. I think the impressive thing is he actually blocks Stringer with his shoulder to get that ball. From that angle, it looks OK. I think there's a hint Just of one the more lane, that, yeah. isn't it? It's uh, David Grassoff, by the way, who's looking at this in our truck. He's falling backwards, which doesn't make it easy, but... Uh, I think if you look at the line on the pitch, he lets go of the ball now, he's got momentum. I think it's OK. Tough decision for David, though. In that case, if it's a tough decision, would he go benefit the doubt? I would, yeah. Blaine. Here we go. The ball comes out of the hand and goes in a forward direction, um, unless you've got something different. Oh, Wayne, I agree. Thank you. Oh, no there try. you go. <laughs> Just as we were saying. Business, by the way, of, of Wayne Barnes taking responsibility is all about the assessor at the end of the match, and that's a big decision that Wayne Barnes feels more comfortable taking himself than actually leaving in the hands of David Grassoff, because if it's the wrong decision at the end of the match, Wayne Barnes is the one who's going to be marked down for it, and on that occasion, he clearly decided that, he, that he'd seen enough and took the responsibility out of David Grassoff's hands. Yeah, he got it wrong, but... <laughs> what, what I'd like to see is that the TMO has to have a card and write the answer down before the referee gives, because I'm not sure the TMO is ever going to disagree with the referee. Call cool, my bluff. <laughs> Still, a major scrum for Bath to have to negotiate. I don't need your help. I don't need your help. I don't need well, dramatic news from the gardens. Northampton, they were 13 points down, are 17 13 up. Phil Dowson and Stephen Myler have just scored quick tries to add to the one from George North earlier. Myler's converted, we're hearing. So it's 19 13 in all the games that kicked off at 3 15. We're right across today. In the scheme of things, massive scrum now. Wilson will want a penalty here, but Myler will obviously want to attack and get the turnover. Wilson wins the battle, and what a psychological blow that is to Harlequins. Having had the try ruled out after a TMO decision, they now get March back and Bart the opportunity to clear their lines and get the throw in. A little self satisfied look on the face of David Wilson. A little bit of consternation on the face of Joe Marler. You can see three was under pressure. We've had a number of scrums, so Toby Booth seems to be the best person to have a chat with at the moment. Um, what, are we to, what are we to make of what's going on in the set pieces at the moment, Toby? How are you seeing it? Well, at the moment, it looks like the person who can make the least mistakes. I mean, no one can buy a line out at the moment. I mean, from our point of view, there's been a bit of disruption, as everyone knows. And um, I think, you know, everyone's looking for some clean possession. Everyone's living, live, living off scraps and trying to impose themselves. But, you know, what effectively is a, you know, a quarter-final here... You know, that's to be expected. I think those things will settle down as, uh, you know, as time goes on. You've lost three line-outs. Is there a pattern that you can see? Well, to be fair, you always look about the nature of the error, and it's basically, you know, is it a strategic thing, i.e. we're making poor calls, you know, or poor process, poor jumps, etc., or is it just ultimately a timing or a throwing issue? And, and for the ones that, we, you know, that we've lost, you know, not straight is always going to be a throw-in issue, and, and we've had a couple of people clean in the air that we've missed. So, yeah, we're disappointed with that because we'd like to control that environment, but the last couple we seem to be, you know, to iron in those problems out. And I know you scored tries like George Ford's every day of your playing career, Toby, but just a, just a word of appreciation on what he did then. Yeah, I mean, the thing from our point of view, if we can get enough field position and ball in that area, you know, people like George, Oli Devoto, JJ... You know, we've got those sort of players, Kyle, etc., that can unlock defences because we play flat of the line. And if you make a bad decision, and they've got lots of pace and footwork, that's what that's what happens to people. Thanks, Toby. Cheers. Here is Devoto. Remember the try he scored at Sandy Park earlier in the season? A little drop of the hips and a sidestep. It was um, it was magnificent. They've got the players as. Toby Booth says to unlock defences, and the bloke with the big key at the moment is George Ford. Here goes Atwood. It's a 
being a real problem for both teams at the moment they're just holding on to possession yeah Fasavalu does really well there to grip the leg and hold on using the leg to ensure the Bath players couldn't clear him off okay no what stopped head injury Yeah, I know, but the last one was probably a slip. George Robson, who slip. took a knock to the noggin. That's the reason we're having a little bit of a delay at the moment. Keeper of the club's line-out codes back after recovering from cushion, concussion. So they're going to be perhaps a little bit more cautious with George than others. Yeah, Sinclair falls, which sort of takes the Bath players away. But look at Farsavalu use that hook under the leg. Now, with that forearm tape onto the ball on means they can't okay, get him out of the way too many bath players going okay, not go. directly yeah, over the ball as well robson's fine 10 meter line always out for asavalu by the way it's not been announced by the club officially yet but he's off to oyana in the top 14 next season oyana holding on to their place in the french elite by the skin of their teeth last day of the season and he's been popular in these parts but this is his final game at the stoop things at the front of that line out reminiscent a little oh, yeah. bit of the try that saved their skins at Sandy Park a week ago yeah. and uh, Danny Kev very nearly got himself away Watson just doing enough to steal the ball apparently Danny Kerr was already in touch which is why Walking around again, according to Wayne Barnes. Looks like it's heavily strapped his right shoulder anyway. George Ford. Occasionally, if you just catch catch your finger in someone's shirt collar and it yanks the shoulder out. Piece into the final 10 minutes of the first half. Ford's okay. Uh, I'll get you one. Uh, those three magic words at this stage of the season. As it stands. As it stands, Bath will be in the playoffs and away to Saracens. Next weekend, Northampton, Leicester at the Gardens on Friday as it stands. Matthews positioned himself well. Thomas wound his body round to create the ball for care to challenge Banahan. It's a long way down when you're Matt Banahan. And that was fairly dexterous to find a Bendenen under a lot of pressure from Williams. But Asavalu again to relaunch the Londoners. Robshaw, Brown, here goes Easter. And this time it's Monia who knocks on a ball I don't think he was expecting. Nick Easter was trying to get Ugo Monia to drop underneath him earlier. Atwood. Returned to full fitness a week ago to play in his 100th game for Bath. See Jonathan Joseph back involved again after being out since Christmas. Forward to Hooper. Tackled by Marla. Devoto over the ball. It came in from Sinclair, but it would have taken some dislodging from the grasp of Ferns. Watson. Weaving his way up to the 10 meter line. Houston. Wilson. On your feet now! Exactly, that's why he let go. 
Banahan. Banahan does really well. First Marler and then Ward. Penalty's coming. Penalty going against Marler, taken quickly. Both sides just searching for a little bit of rhythm. Really interesting to see Bath trying to speed the game up with quick taps. Ford was looking for Wilson and maybe Watson would have been the better option. Ward gathers it eventually. Evans, Williams. Ruins. Money is chasing this. Ford was grateful for a bounce of the ball that at least gave him an opportunity to vote her. Cries of a knock on from the locals around as if it'll be Quinn's possession anyway. They've got the turnover. Kerr, Robson. Devoto just stepped back in, probably the wrong way, into the traffic, tried to beat Ugo Monia, but Williams was still there. The kick through, and then it's a foot race. Monia, Williams working really well as a pair. Ford as well, just to buy time. Out the back door, Devoto does so well to pick it up. He goes back to where all the traffic is, and the Bath support players struggling to get back anyway, turns it over. He sidestepped back into everyone, didn't need a vote. He did an excellent job picking up in the first place, but then decided that his sidestep should take him into the tackle as opposed to away from it. No hanging around from Evans. Kick sails towards Twickenham, which is the destination in a couple of weeks' time. As things stand, that's where Harlan Williams are heading. They're back ahead and back into the top four. Now, there's still a little bit more blood on the head of Eusebio Guinazu, so he's going to have to head off to get that sorted out. I think I heard the referee saying as well that it's blood and the concussion assessment. Watch back one, please. OK, on you. Well, if Wayne Barnes is concerned about Guinazu, it's, it's good to see after the ridiculous goings on last night in the top 14 with Florian Fritz, who didn't know if his name was Fred or Florence, was put back on the pitch. But Barnes with some concern for winners of his welfare. The, the timing of Ford's passes, so often he creates extra momentum for his runners. Joseph. Young. Ford. This is the photo. Oh, he was rocked backwards in the tackle there as he ran into Sinclair. Here goes young Tom Dunn, who's on again as emergency hooker. Joseph running at some speed, nearing the end of the first season with his new club. Ford again, releasing Watson. Another former exile trying to do some damage late on in the campaign. Houston. Try each so far. First Mike Brown, then George Ford. Where's the next one coming from? This is Ferns. Ford. Starting to create the buzz around him that whenever he gets the ball, there's that little murmur of anticipation. You don't know what he's going to do because he's so good at making that late decision. He's almost waiting for the Harlequins defenders to step out of the line. Once again, another turnover. Stolen by... Dave Ward, but it's been handed back to them. This is Mercer. Anthony Watson's not really a, a full, fair paying passenger at the moment. He's hobbling. And then Ford under some pressure from Faasabalu. Kicks the ball back to Quinn's possession. That's brutal collisions coming in in this game. There's no one at home behind for Bath. And Mike Brown's down on his knees as well. Abandonens. Noted that he needs to wander back now. Okay, lost forward. Scrummage. <laughs> They're out on their feet, the players, aren't they? Maybe not about the ball, please. Watch his stop, we've got men down. Well, I know we've had our fair share yeah, of I've had a lot, Wayne. There's nothing stoppages there. and set pieces, but I'd love to know the percentage of time the ball's been in play, the minutes the ball's been in play. This is really testing their fitness, and we've not even reached half time yet. 
Yeah, and that's why this man's yes, going to come more and more into the we'll game because as we'll the defenders, particularly some of those big forwards, we'll Sinclair's put, put a lot of big hits yeah, in. Well, Ford's getting a lot of space, Ben, because a lot of the time Harlequins aren't actually walking around the corner. They're standing on the blind side, their defenders, and they need to get to the far side. I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute, but... Yeah, it's going to be that scrum. Uh, I think Wayne Bond just wants to check with David Grassoff about a, a player he thinks who was tackled off the ball. David, I presume there's nothing there because there's nothing coming up on the screen. Yeah, we haven't located it yet, but I, I had a look at it, Wayne, and I'm quite happy there's nothing there. Scrum. Now we get on with it, which is Thanks, Great, good from news. We're all good. Hopefully the TMO situation will get sorted out next season. I do think it's detracting from the game and the enjoyment of it. Northampton, having been 13-0 down, have already scored their fourth try. What a comeback. Luther Burrell has got the bonus point, the points they need, and they will be at home in the semi-finals of the playoffs against Leicester. Half-time at the Gardens. It's on the mark. Just both teams came up on the mark, same ball. Less than the last time we were heard, we're still behind at Welford Road to a very um, different looking Saracen starting 15. Mark McCall using the opportunity to rest some bigger names today. Jack Berger with us in the studio. But Ben Spencer's try still has them ahead. 8-3. A little bit further up the M1 at Welford Road. Well, that's another questioning shove from the bath eight. Oh, scrabble to get that ball to safety. Care completes the job. Finds touch. Not now, fellas, two that's locked at 15 wins apiece down the years. Have one draw, back one at the wreck in December, but they've not left here with a Premiership victory for a decade. That has to change if they're to deny Conor O'Shea and Dave Ward a place in these end-of-season playoffs. If Bath lose, the only way they can qualify is by having a couple of losing bonus points at the end of it. Again, asked to throw along. I still don't think that was straight. Need to tail off. Final 10 seconds of a busy first 40 in the match that will decide who's in the playoffs and whose Premiership season ends here. As it stands, George Ford won't be in the playoffs, despite his try. Mike Brown's early score, and then the kicking of the Kiwi Nick Evans has Harlequins ahead. 10-7, Sarah. Well, I was trying to have a quick chat with uh, Stuart Hooper, but they're going into their huddle at the moment. Um, we'll... Next 40 minutes. made the change at hooker a permanent one at half time tom dunn the academy prop effectively the fourth choice hooker is on permanently for eusebio guinard so we assume it's concussion that was wayne barnes concern when he invited Bath to make the change harlequins as they were Intense, brutal first half, wasn't it? Bath really came back with good momentum at the end. They'll want to take that. Didn't really want the uh, first half to end, I think. Mike Ford. Brown takes the kick off at the start of the second half. Tackle was tackled by Mercer, and the two of them had a little bit of a tangle as they got up together, and then Kyle Sinclair juggles the ball forward. Interesting to hear Stuart Hooper talking about the conditions, the wind to Sarah 
coming off at the end of the first half, but maybe we're not paying enough attention to just how blustery it is out there. Uh, it is, and it is swirling all over the place, but he's responsible for where the line-out is called to, and it's you know, the line-out's been really poor for both sides, but both sides have been trying to throw a 15-metre throw. Crouch! First scrum of the second half. Mickey Young waited till the end of the season to wrestle the starting jersey from Peter Stringer. Former Leicester Knight. Free kick, Leroy Houston. Bouncing this way and that. Bounced on the way to Ferns and that gave Quinn's time to rescue the situation. Strange decision when you're three points down in a tight game going for fourth place. It was a penalty. And he took a tap and then danced around a bit and a bit of an offload. I don't think the coaches will be overly pleased with that decision making from Leroy Houston. So that get that balance back. That was what the last It's clear in the first half was that Mike Ford's sent them out to play with pace to up the uh, accelerator when they can, but he was shaking his head there. Turner Hall. Hip injury kept him out for four months. Lost George Lowe for much of the season as well. Just hold, just hold. Yep. It's taken back in, I believe, Wayne. Yes, it was. First try of the second half has come at Franklin's Gardens. Lee Dixon with Saints fifth against Wasps. To give them now a very healthy lead after Wasps shocked everyone by going 13 0 up early on. Saints nailed on for a home semi-final at the Gardens under the lights on a Friday night. And then it's where it's kicked, so it's Big little out. meeting there between the bar forwards. We're just guaranteeing that everyone knows the call. Ferns in at scrum half, he'll go straight into the ball if they can win it, but they don't cleanly. It's fair competition in the air. The ball was knocked out of Stuart Hooper's grasp, but it worked out in the end for Bath. Here goes Atwood. Ford, Devoto, he's tall and strong on the ball. He's got some future ahead of him, you would have thought. Ford, Abandon and all the slip from Marler allowed Abandon to go through, and then the slip from Brown, and he's moved up to within a metre of the try line. Can Bath make Quinn's pay for a couple of potentially costly slips? I think it's done with his hands on the ball they're trying to drive him over there's a a wedge of multi-colored harlequin shirts there's no way through there advantage is coming little tantalizing glimpse of what we won't be seeing in a bath shirt next season from abandonment yeah he spots the slip doesn't he of marla goes through the gap but then you just think why don't you pin your ears back the angle looked like he had his pace to the corner I think he's scoring here if he keeps going Brown's got a lot of ground to make up steps back into him great cover tackle by Danny Kerr as well and uh, Chris Robshaw as you said Ford spots it doesn't he Ben yeah it was just again drifted on the pass but then as soon as it reached his hands he cut back in and Penalty, Marlon you, you knew he was drifting yeah. tried to sprint to close the go. gap on the outside and he just ducked back sure, in go got the prop hook line and sinker it's going to be go for goal okay it'll be a penalty here it's yeah. flat on his back at the moment one game left in a bath shirt by the way whatever happens here over the next 35 minutes or so the amelin cup Julian, final goal, so let you carry on against we'll northampton for Watch mike ford's on, mob cardiff arms park in a fortnight that will be his we'll carry on okay we'll farewell carry on. perhaps he will hope that it lasts we'll just, for we'll another week on, and okay. they say goodbye we'll at twickenham at the moment though it is Harlequins heading into the playoffs. Fifth are overtaking fourth for the time being. But if this goes over, then it's all change again. So tight. All we can say for certain is that Saracens will finish first, Northampton will finish second. In terms of third, fourth and fifth at the moment, it's still up in the air. Benton's back on his feet. Anthony 
get the digits of Guy Mercer to hold the ball. Between the posts, destiny of the Premiership's golden boot decided at the end of the day. Another three points into the account of George Ford, who's favourite. We're level, 45 minutes gone, Harlequins 10, Bath 10, and Bath are back in the top four, and Bath are heading for the playoffs. Well, we talked about the win, Ben. It's worked out in Bath's favour. Here goes Ferns. Tackle only. Devoto. Devoto still going. Four. It's asking a, an awful lot of Watson, and it's gone straight out anyway. First time we've seen a little bit of indecision. He was stood really flat, as though he wanted to bring those runners in, as he's been doing so well, particularly at the end of the first half. And then I think he just changed his mind, looked up, tried to dink it in behind, and as we saw with the Nick Evans kickoff, a difficult win to judge. Austin. Oh, well, just looking at the break actually, and it's a matchup, it's a classic matchup. Ford spots it. You've got three slow defenders on that blind side. And then all you're trying to do is get a fast guy with good footwork into them. That's what happens. Abandon on spots Marler. Perfect matchup. But it's it's common all the way through here, because Quinn's defensive isn't wrapping round. So they end up with their slow guys being isolated and easy to attack. A couple of significant bits of news to bring you from Welford Road, but first Ward on a bustling run. Oh, Williams was screaming for it, and it didn't happen in the end. But there's a penalty and a yellow card, and it's abandoned. And Bath down to 14 for the next 10. Yeah, it's a cheap one, because I don't think he plays the ball. But because he's in an offside position and he doesn't move, as the ball's presented back, the hands and the ball smash against his shin and dislodge it. All the excitement, I might have said, abandoning it's Banahan. Not mixing up either of those two, it's definitely Matt Banahan who's gone. Yeah, good offload inside from Easter and then that ability to stay on his feet and as he passes the ball back, Banahan's come from a position on the Harlequin side. And although he didn't try and play the ball, he's entered into the rock, and that's why he's gone. Now Harlequin's making a change as well. Hugo Monia um, looks like he's got an injury problem, so he's replaced by Sam Smith. Club's top try scorer in the Premiership this season with eight. His last game here before he follows Worcester to the Championship. Sam Smith on for Monia. But he's got down. Into Okay, to going, going the map 14, back. and it looks like Nick Abendanen's match is over as well. Samisa Rokadaguni's coming on, and if that's how it ends, it's a very sad end to Nick Abendanen's Premiership career at bat. He will hope it isn't, but Abendanen's gone. Oh, stolen. Or rather snatched out by Robson. For Asabalu. Kerr, Easter, Sinclair, he's driven back by Burns, and the quality of the tackle was enough to dislodge the ball. Two goals. A brilliant tackle from Ferns because Sinclair was running on that outside line. Very difficult to put a powerful shot on anyone. But much easier to make those big hits when the runner's coming back towards you and it's a collision head on head. Supporter will hope that that's not the last time we see him in the Premiership. And he's still got the Anglin Cup final as well to look forward to, of course, to get fit for it. Ball won by Atwood. Oh, 
Charlie Matthews. Needs to recycle himself back in, make sure he doesn't give away the penalty. Mercer is part of the posse that won it back for Young. There he goes, Rocco de Guni. Ford. Doing his best work on the knife edge. This is Tom Dunn. On at half time for Gwinazu. Bring them on, bring them on! And then Devoto. One of the reasons he was preferred ahead of Eastman today was because of the kicking. Here goes Williams, though, off that kick. First time we've really seen Williams with his first full throated run towards the line. But Ferns, Devoto, and then Williams got back and was up quickly on his feet. But he was cleared off the ball by Hooper. Fierce competition of the breakdown from both sides. Wilson, Joseph. Just you sense beginning to generate a little bit here. Here goes Ford once more. The man who often flicks the switch, but that was ripped back from him. And Brown will chase his own kick. And Watson's there, and so is Rocco de Guni. And it's Watson who gets back first of all, but just count the Quinn shirts. This will be a very handy turnover. A really handy turnover. They've got a penalty, which was the next best thing. Danny Kerr scrabbling for the ball just to see if there's an opportunity to go. He's gone. Kerr takes it quickly. Did he hit the bottom of the post, Mike Brown? Oh. It was an overlap, but they just couldn't get the ball out there. They're not there yet. Kerr. Oh, and Mercer gathers it. And no badges, not 10 metres. No, will still come for the, the back for the bad penalty, however, for the Quinn's penalty. What an amazing turnover on Ford. I think it was Rob Shaw, maybe. Chris, just ripped captain, it out. You shouldn't be coming up and asking for things about putting players in the bin, OK? That's not captain's responsibility. Not ten. Danny Kerr had a couple of opportunities there, didn't need to get this ball wide. As you said, Ben, does he get to the bottom of the post? It's a great tackle by Ford and Devoto. Well, that knee does he touch? Does it. he touch? Does he touch? Well, great defence. Oh, it's Devoto's left knee. Mind you, but this is a kick to put Harlequins back in the playoffs as it stands. Well, he scored the try that lit the fires when it looked very gloomy down at Sandy Park a week ago, and he's kicked the kick that puts Twins back ahead here. Meantime changes. Peter Stringer is on permanently now for Mickey Young, and David Wilson's been replaced in the front row as well by Anthony Peronisi. And Mary Fasabalu playing his final game at the Stoop takes his leave as well. He's been replaced by Tom Guest. Watson. Oh, Watson's gone through! It's a chase for the line, Brown! Oh, he stood his ground and Watson slipped on turf that was sodden by the storm before the match. Devoto, Stringer, Ford, Ferns. There's still some life about that, some bite about them with the ball in hand. Without doubt, they've played some great stuff, particularly the likes of Ferns getting those hands through. Good break there from Watson. Carl Sinclair's bent some saucepan handles today. He's uh, really weighed in with the tackles. Another young man with a very bright future. 
Here goes Perenice. Maybe back here in the Premiership next season with Andy Robinson's Bristol. Devoto, Marla flew out. Devoto went beyond him. That's a, pen that's a penalty to Bath. It's the wrong way. He's got that completely wrong. He hasn't supported his own body weight there at all, Nick Easter. He's flopped over the ball. Got away with it. The other point I make is that the opportunities for Easter to get in was caused by Marla flying out of the line and taking the knees of a player who didn't get the ball, who would, would have then cleared out that run. Three minutes, by the way, left on Matt Banahan Sinbini. What a break from Watson, though. Eyes on the ball, difficult to take. Picks it off the surf and then just accelerates. Watch what happens when he gets to the contact area, though. This, for me, I think is a yellow card. Both two Quinns players go right over the top and put their heads on the floor. You saw Mike Ford on the sidelines screaming. No Jack Knoll on England's tour. No Christian Wade we've been hearing this week as Marifa Asabalu takes his leave. What about Anthony Watson yeah. on the plane with Andy Farrell to New Zealand? And Chris Ashton back to form as well. Big, big opportunity for a couple of guys who want to restake a plane and want to try and make a name for himself. Be careful they don't come around the side, swim around the side. Okay, Evans, Turner Hall coming back in on the switch. Run into a combination of Mercer and Perenice. Um, Kerr was hoping for somebody swifter out there than Sinclair, but Sinclair will give it his absolute best, and it's worth the chase. Even chases that seem lost. Sinclair comes out on top there, and he's got a little bit of a short fuse, and has, but, we're testing but it but there. Watson, Sinclair's trying to get the ball so he can throw it in. Pushes Stringer, and Watson takes the exception to it. Sinclair's in the right there. He should have been allowed to play that. And that referee's got it spot on. He spotted it and given Harlequins a penalty for Watson preventing the quick line-out. He prevented a quick line-out, number 14, penalty. Well, that was top chugging from Kyle Sinclair. Never get up. All right, he used to play in the centres. So powerful, isn't it? He's still an academy player. He's set to be promoted to the senior squad over the summer. He's having a big part to play over the closing games this season with Will Collier and Paul Doran Jones on the sidelines. Collier, by the way, back on the bench today. Conor O'Shea is absolutely convinced that Sinclair's a, an England man in the making. Good tackle as well. Goes for the ball to play the quick one. Stringer's trying to stop him playing it. Watson comes in, takes offence. Done everything right there, Sinclair. I think this three points actually would be more important than you think, Nick, because just over the stand is the biggest cloud I've ever seen in my life. It's about to come in. It could be torrential here. Six points then becomes massive if you can't play any rugby because of the weather. In front of a set of posts that were swaying in the gale. It's a half dozen point cushion now for Harlequins. is Alafotti Barsaliba and he's taking the place of Guy Mercer. Bowers is back. Bath back to 15. Brown. One two. Concerns from Harlequin's coaching staff in the first half about a knock that Mike Brown might have taken, but he seems to be moving easily enough these days. Ford. With Banahan chasing after it, one bounce into touch. There's every possibility that if Owen Farrell's playing for Saracens across the road in the Premiership final in three weeks' time. Mike Brown playing the last 30 seconds with just one boot on. Taken out in the tackle from the restart. If you used to do that, though, you never left it on the pitch. You carried it to the other end and threw it into the crowd. Five. 
and now taken by Robson. Here goes Tom Guest, London Irish player next season. Not got far to go for training, just up the A316. Irish's new training base that's taking shape, some group. Watson, Ooh, that ball is swirling around. Like a man at deep square leg as the potential catch comes towards you. That was a tough one to take. That would wait, instead it's Ford. Brown, Easter, doing his best to keep up with him. Far Saliba, high tackle. It doesn't need more than a penalty, just got done by the sidestep. Brown thinks it need, might need a little bit more. Not like him to be fired up, is it? That's a lever going for the big hit, swings the arm a bit. He was intending to make contact with the shoulder, but Brown stepped off the line. He caught him to get the penalty. And Harkins get a really good opportunity to build another attacking bit of momentum. Stay down here. She's quite low anyway. Yeah, the atmosphere beginning to build towards the fever pitch that we had in that magnificent game against Leicester here on a Friday night a couple of weeks ago into the final quarter in the final match of the regular season. At the moment, it's Quinns who are extending their premiership lives into the playoffs. Charlie Matthews, who's had another very good season. Ward, who was voted the coaches player of the season and the players player of the season. The award ceremony down the road in Putney on Wednesday. Care, Evans, taken on by Guest scored the try that saved their bacon at Sandy Park a week ago and now part of the move that's pressing the foot on the throat of Bath now desperate defence from Peronese still London ball Easter rolling away with it Robshaw into Houston the try line and that just might be the playoffs if they can get there Harlequins are trying to tie in as many to Bath defenders as they can Bath doing really well to get numbers out initially and then Banahan was trying to catch the ball we heard what Wayne Barnes had to say about it Evans no Ford's down in a, in a really bad way I think it's Ford yeah rolling around gr grabbing that shoulder again just a knock on you've taken a shot at goal man fast forward say again four again, that missed wrong goal the advantage went Stuart Hooper's being replaced by Dominic Day Anthony Farrell watching on, and he sharing everyone's concerns about George Ford's fitness at the moment. It's that stage of the season, Ben, when it, any injury has England's alarm bells ringing. Okay, 22. Dave Atwood, we hear, is skippering the side. 22, you're, you're 22. Semi-finals, okay, first of which will be next Friday. At the moment, it is no, Northampton no, against amazing. Leicester. Good to go. Both semi-finals, of course, here on BT Sport. Second one at Allianz Park. Saracens, for the time being, against Harlequins. What do Bath have to say about that in the remaining 19 minutes? Rob Shaw. Evans, he held on to the pass because the Voto was on interception alert. 
Ball cannons into for Asaliba. Picked up by Kerr. He's had another busy day. Ford. Yep. We'll just mark that just in case. This is okay. Tom Williams. A couple of lengthy injuries means that this is just his second Premiership appearance in a while. I see that. I think you saw the strength of the win there, Nick, in the contrast in two kicks. Ford puts the ball up in the air. It's a full 60, 70 metre kick. And you realise that Williams, he wanted to make ground as quickly as possible into the wind. Hearing that Leicester have secured a bonus point against Saracens. Graham Kitchener with their fourth try, which as good as make sure that they'll be in third place at the end of the regular season. And therefore making the short trip to their good friends at Franklin's Gardens in the semis. Well, cut to a six-man line out. Ready for the drive, but they've got on the ball again. Oh, the line out has been a real issue for them today. Without Weber, without Batty. Easter, this is Ward. He's lifted off his feet in the tackle, such was the ferocity Dominic Day. A key component. Yeah. How much that ball's being held up in the breeze. It's in Bath's favour, and they need it to be. Behind as they are, this is Houston. Houston done well under pressure. Just keeps those legs driving. Burns, who's made over 50 metres in this match so far today. Devoto. He's looked dangerous, Devoto, hasn't he? He's given them some direction, he's gone forward. Now Paul James wound himself up. The ball was lost forward. We can um, have a word with with Mark Mapletop. Are you breathing, Mark? How are you feeling? Top of the world. <laughs> all a little bit tight, all a little bit tense. Try and put some shape on it for us. We, I think we played the conditions better second half than we did in the first half, if I'm honest. I think far more emphasis on our kicking game. Um, although, in fairness, you know, George showed with the one he put out on the full. It's not, it's not actually that easy with, the, with a, a, a gale behind you to actually find the corners as well as perhaps it looks on TV. But, yeah, pleased with the intensity we've bought. Um, you know, they're a good side, Bath, and they, they, they play to their strengths well, and we've just got to make sure we match them up, set piece, and, and nullify George, who I think has played fantastically well. Are there bits of your game that aren't quite going to plan at the moment, things that need improving to make sure you get over the line and into the playoffs? No, the, the, the big um, word for us at half-time is just making sure we, we tried as much as possible in these conditions to play in the right area, and I think we've intended to do so. We've started to get a bit more joy in and around the breakdown, which is what we pride ourselves on, and... Um, marrying the two together is, is probably why we've managed to, to score a couple of penalties. So, yeah, really pleased with that. And, but, look, you know, six points, they only need a draw. 15 minutes to go and they've got the wet, you know, the wind behind them. So, all to play for still. We'll let you concentrate on your job. Thanks, Mark. Cheers, Nick. Exactly what he said there. Danny Kerr's come out and kicked a lot of possession, looking for that territory. A lot easier to kick from nine than it is than ten when you're into the wind. ball to deal with here and then Williams is very nearly clobbered he's caught up in the end by Fartaliba and then the captain doing a brilliant job Rob Shaw oh he was looking for Williams that would have been very interesting Stringer's down now as well Barkley getting decimated by injuries Stringer's in a lot of pain Under real pressure from the scrum, James had turned in and got underneath Sinclair, and then Rob Shaw just the gap opened up for him. Gets the fend out, accelerates, cuts back in towards his support, almost puts in a brilliant timed offload. See how disappointed he is because Williams was away. Yeah, I didn't know he stood his ground. North Hampshire into the playoffs. They now lead Wasps by 60. Points to did 13, you want to look which is way? their biggest Premiership potentially win ever. Yes. And there's still what 15 minutes to go. Everyone kicking off at the same time today, 3:15. And 
to think there was a time early on in that match where yeah, Wasps just, led 13 0. Just looking at something. Yeah, go on then, mate. Now, a little bit of obstruction that Wayne Barnes wants to have David Grassoff have a look at. Did McKees the take out Leroy Houston? Okay, would, would he have got to Chris Robshaw? Otherwise, can make a are we really going we to the TMO for great. that? That's correct, Wayne. Okay, it's we just scrap this TMO Stanford. business. No, he's grabbed his arm deliberately. It's a penalty. Oh, come Five on! Meters, They'll never ever be any self policing in a rugby Sweet match ever Sweet again are, if we carry on like this. Right. It's just becoming sterile and ludicrous. It's a potentially enormous decision. I don't have you on the screen at the moment. Potentially enormous decision. 15 minutes to go. It's going to be a penalty. Six points behind okay. with the wind okay. with a penalty. Okay, number eight playing number eight without the ball. Go for golf. Forward lines like this kicks, just stringers testing out that elbow could be really significant. I'm trying to read Nick Easter's body language. There wasn't there wasn't an awful lot of dissent from him. You'd expect too much. And the bloke is experienced as Nick Easter, but there was no real fury at the decision. Maybe yeah, was good. The he thought he might be up before the beat. Just a reminder, should you need reminding, that a draw would be good enough for Bath. A draw would take Bath into the playoffs. Justice there in the wrong sort of way. Stringer that is really struggling with that elbow. Sam Smith was herring after that, and the penalty goes against Atwood. Not quite. Or should. Can't say definitely with the win, but should wipe that three points out. Keeps his eye on the ball, but he knows exactly what he's doing. And stops. Center Turner Hall. It's Rocker de Gooney this time chasing the kick. Has a little look, doesn't he? And steps to his left. Having already positioned himself on the right hand side. And if you've just gained a penalty for exactly the same offence, it's you're always rolling the dice if you're not squeaky kick clean at the next kickoff. We're hearing that Stephen Myler's been replaced at the garden, so whatever happens now, George Ford will win the Aviva Premiership's Golden Boot Award at the end of this season. He can't be overtaken now, but this kick matters much more than any end of season gongs. The 
tension out of this sponge. Approaching the final 10 minutes of the last game of the regular season, and we and him still don't know. George Ford has currently scored all bats points in the last two matches. 19 against Northampton, 16 so far against Harlequins. You heard the referee shout more just before that collapse. I think Har Harlequins will get the foot in. System going on. I think it's raining in the far half of the pitch to the right, but not in the quins to the left. No, a bit of feet away, a bit of angle, a bit of everything. Press off, press off. No, it's a bit of feet away, a bit of your angle. What? Can you come to get the weight off you? There's an indication of just how competitive the top half of the table has been this season. Never needed this many points to reach the playoffs. Bath could conceivably miss out with 66, which is five more than was actually needed to do the job last season. That's how tight it's been, how tough the scrap for fourth place has been. from Bath. James just running around the outside, getting away with it. They'll keep doing it if the referee's not going to penalise you for it. Robshaw. Care. Sinclair. He looks like he's going the distance. They've got Will Collier as the replacement tight head. No signs of movement down below us on the benches. Care to turn a hole. See Harlequin's tactics have changed now, just that round the corner pots of forwards crashing it up. Danny Care making decisions as to whether to put the ball into the corner. We'll just use it in his big forwards, not making a lot of ground. Turn a hole. That was a no arm tackle. Yes. Caught by the two arms of Atwood. Brown, England's player of the season. Charlie Matthews drives it forward. Smith hit back. Molinar. And this is very tidy stuff. London Irish have beaten Sale, 22-20. First result of the afternoon. Evans, Easter. This is very tidy, tight play from Harlequins. Biting away at the clock. Evans. No one really chasing that. And Watson has an age to dab it down for the 22. It's a very strange feeling about all of this at the moment. It's almost as if both sides are out on their feet. No one wants to make a mistake, that's it, isn't it? So Harlequins are playing that, you see Gohan Henson stripping off. You see Harlequins playing that safe round the corner game. We haven't seen them play an awful lot in years, the recent years. Northampton have now scored 67 against Wasps. It's an Austin Dart score. Once again, just happy to play for territory. Happy for Bath to bring it out from deep and put pressure on the likes of Watson. Inside. 
Ford did well. Devoto. Rocco Daguni scored a try for the army across the road at Twickenham in front of 82,000 a week ago. And he's having a hand here as well. Jonathan Joseph. Someone's lost their mouth guard. Ford. So much more to play for. Ford again. It's beginning to open up a little bit here for Bath. Now scrum half. Nick Evans was down injured as well, but it was Perenice who lost the ball forward. Just for half a second. Bath were just beginning to build some momentum. Harlequins have got to be so careful, though. They know that the draw would be good enough for Bath. Okay, first one, Evans forward, down. Forward, 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 forward. I'd be glad to get that scrum because no one was really stepping up to be the, the boss, the playmaker. So we see Botica come on, he'll do that role. Ben Botica on for Nick Evans. And Bathroom there, 22 on as well. Gavin Henson coming on for Jonathan Joseph. So Bath will. Go with Henson at outside centre. It's a lovely little break. The step inside, Evans puts everything into the tackle. Just catches that shoulder, hyper extends it. Austin, I've got a sense it's going to get busy between now and the end of the match. So let's uh, get the Aviva Premiership man of the match. Well, I think there's been some good performances. I think that uh, George Ford's played particularly well. His try was amazing. Danny Kerr's up the tempo. But our Aviva Premiership man of the match today is the Harlequins captain, Chris Robshaw. He's led the tackle count for his team. And uh, he basically just led from the front. 15 tackles so far in the game and uh, a leader's award. Burns for Bath as well has been absolutely superb, hasn't it? Some of his carries, getting the ball through the contact and getting that offload away. Harlequins must guard against the penalty. The referee is letting so much go on at the scrum. Yes. Will Watson was bamboozled by the ball and the breeze once again. It's a really nice kick from Botica. And Watson makes the right decision there. If you're in doubt, just take the line out and start again. Northampton have won 74-13, their biggest ever Premiership win. They're sure of a home semi-final. 74-13, and they were 13-0 down early on. Nick Evans looks in some pain, which will be a concern if they are to go through the door into the playoffs. George Robson's being replaced by Nick Kennedy, who a year ago was on his way to winning a Heineken Cup. They've also brought on Will Collier at tight head to replace Kyle Sinclair. Collier back involved. Ferns got that away brilliantly. Did so well. Outside. Atwood. Three and a half minutes of the regular Premiership season to go. Arkham's just desperate to keep Bath down here, out of three-point range. Back to Henson. So often the story writer. Inside. Is there somebody out there who's got one last line to write? Maybe Ford. So often for Bath this season, it has been Ford. Season of so much promise. Where nearly all of it has been spent inside the playoffs. 
but right at the end on the final weekend are they slipping out Houston making good decisions at the moment Bath not to throw those miracle passes just got to be careful they don't go off feet trying to protect the ball carrier A Worcester we're hearing have beaten Gloucester first home win at six ways for an age they're going down to the championship with at least a little spring in their step all still to play for here as Henson links up neatly with Watson Harlequin's defense remaining watertight Ford this is Henson it remains a furious battle for the ball on the floor but just how hard are about having to work to watch, make three, four metres odds. Watch Rocket de Gooney, he's just following Ford around the field. He's about five metres behind, not now he's going to the rook, but for the last three phases, he's five metres behind him, just chasing Ford. In the end, it's Devoto with the big kick. Brown's chasing it back. There's no bad player showing any real intention to chase this. They're just going to be satisfied with Harlequin's dropping out. Brown's going to run as much of the clock down as he can. We're approaching the final minute. Last minute, wins for the Alex! Alex is taking every single second they can. So they're throwing the ball around before a long drop kick. It will come. And they'll try and use that defensive line just to keep Bath pinned back again Burns. 30 seconds left it's not the end of the season for Bath they've got the Anwin Cup final still to come against Northampton in Cardiff but for an hour or so at the end of this, it'll feel like the end of the season if they can't get something from what's left of this match. Turn over there. Still we go on. One last throw. Is it to be four? Oh, it might well be. Peronise. Banahan's beyond him. There are far more Quinn shirts than Bath shirts at the moment. We're into the red zone. A penalty would do it for Bath. A drop goal would do it. It's going to have to be special. It's not for one special from Ford. And Connor O'Shea knows that that's the moment that they sneak into the playoffs. Five wins in a row at the end of the season. Bath have been there for all but one week of it. But on the weekend that matters most, they drop out. And this time there's no safety net. I just can't believe that Ford took the drop goal from there. They've been playing really patient stuff. His drop goals haven't been that good over the last couple of weeks. He at least thought he would have tried to get a little bit closer. Very costly in the end, but take nothing away from Harlequins, how they battle back from tough points with injuries during the season to qualify. Fully deserved to be there. Bath players will be gutted because they've had a really consistent season as well. Yeah, massive effort from both sides. I agree with you, Ben. I think that he could have just maybe gone two or three more phases, tried to get a bit closer, but that Quinn's defence it held out against some unbelievable attack. And Bath's long way for the playoffs will stretch into a fifth season. They're not going to emulate the boys of 2010. For so long, it looked as if it was theirs this season, but they banked against Harlequins, accelerating towards the end of the campaign. Driven on by the likes of Mike Brown, Daddy Care, and it will be they who take their place at Allianz Park next Saturday in the playoffs.